insurance, it doesn't matter whether it's during operational hours or not operational hours, I don't know if there's any kind of liability issues when we're not open. I believe it's the paperwork they have to fill out that is in the liability Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if that's not an issue, um, secondly, if it were up to me, I, I'd rather it be a decision of the local branch man, of the local manager, let them decide if they want to use the facility or not. But the public facility, right. it's being operated. I mean, if, if the person who runs that particular branch has got a conflict, and that's their scheduling responsibility. If it were me running a library and I had someone hired, I'd rather have the ability to say yes or no at my level and not be dictated by someone who doesn't see the big picture. Obviously, the board didn't know what was going on down there at the library. The local librarian, I'm sure, did. I'd, I'd prefer to have them have the ability to make that decision on their own. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, let me speak to that just for a second. There is a long history of, of an issue around what you're talking about that I guess you're not aware of that has caused problems in the past. One of the things I would suggest, perhaps, Madam Chair, is that what we do is not only, uh, in fact, I'll make the formal motion since you can't, that we do suspend the rule and allow the uh, meetings to proceed as they have at Southside until our next meeting. Put that forward as a motion. Uh, but I would also suggest that while we're doing that, that we um, convene a committee of this board to explore that. And part of the issue is I don't have any problem, you know, responding to what Mr. Barr says about leaving certain decisions in the hands of the branch manager, but the way we are, we as the board are ultimately responsible and we at least need to to uh, determine what what that policy is going to be. And we also need to weigh that in terms of the authority and the responsibility of the library's overall director, who ultimately is responsible to us for whatever goes on in the system. And I would be uncomfortable with stripping our director of authority without some consideration. But I think that we need to also examine the, the books, I suppose that's the way to say, to see if there have been issues that have arisen at any branch. Uh, we point to an example that occurred here, and that was a particularly unfortunate situation that was poisoned the well for, for everybody else. And so, um, I guess I leave it at that. I mean, I, I think we ought to consider it a, a committee. Is, is there an existing us. committee that this would fall under, or can we convene a special committee? Oh, I would say, I don't think special. we have a standing committee that addresses these kinds of things. Oh, we have so to be so um, My opinion is we're getting too deep in the weeds here. On, we're going to do a lot of work here with a special committee to just say is it okay to have a group that's been Well, but for I think years. it's a little more complicated than that, Gary, because we do have a standing policy and we have passed this policy. Um, all we can do today is amend the policy and come back next month and ask that, that it be rewritten based on guidance, but the guidance has to come from somewhere, so it seems like it would make sense to have a, a committee of folks be able to sit down and, mm -hmm. um, as Mr. Cobbler uh, mentioned, to see if there have been issues that either the other libraries and maybe re-examine what happened here and see if, if perhaps uh, you know, there are changes that we can make and then come back next month and, and uh, based on the recommendations revisit the, the actual policy. Okay.